Okay, now we're going to talk about yeast starters. So, um, is it required? No. Should you do it? Absolutely. So, I don't care if you're brewing out of your garage on the stovetop or in a uh, commercial brewery. Um, having healthy yeast is the key to having good beer. All right. So, different types of yeast. Dry yeast. Okay, for this, instructions on the back, just rehydrate it. So, get some water, sprinkle it in there stir it up, let it sit for an hour or two, and you're good to go. The bad thing I don't like about dry yeast is you cannot wash it. We'll do a separate video on that. But that's where you take the yeast that has already fermented a beer and you clean it. You're washing it. You're allowing the gravity to, to separate the layers of the trube, the yeast byproduct, um, and actual still live and healthy yeast, okay? So you're separating those and then you're going to basically salvage the, the live and healthy yeast cells so you can reuse it. It'll save you money. This and this are two different brands of uh, liquid yeast, and these are going to cost you about anywhere from uh, 6 7 to $10 a piece. Um, so the amount of yeast you'll get after a batch, even in just a five-gallon homebrew, is significantly more, this, uh, more than that, and you'll save... I mean, hundreds of, hundreds of dollars in the long run. Okay, so going into this, first thing you'll need is a stir plate. So what this is, it's a computer fan, essentially, that is going to put um, a um, um, medicine stir bar on it, and it's going to spin around, okay? Uh, you can get one of these for about $35. Um, uh, my recommendation, uh, it comes just in this Ziploc bag here, but it's from stirstarters.com. So stirstarters.com. The best thing about this is that this one is guaranteed for life. So the gentleman that makes these, he sells them online. He guarantees them if it breaks, you just send it back to him, keep the piece of paper, and he'll replace it for free. All right? So that's essential. And then your flask is essential. The Eldermeyer flask, which is key if you're doing stovetop starters, um, which we can do a separate video on that. But honestly, um, for a few extra bucks, you can get some canned wort, which is the unfermented sugar water, basically, for beer and it's already sanitized, you just pop the top of this and throw it in. Um, you can get these for a few bucks at the homebrew store, uh, or you can just order them online. All right, it is very simple and only takes a couple minutes. I also like adding oxygen uh, to, my, um, to my starter, and I do it just by hooking it up to an O2 bottle here. Uh, it's about 10 bucks at Lowe's. Um, this is about $80 you can get it on Amazon. It's just an oxygen wand. Uh, or you can use some other uh, sort of oxygen stone. So before we get into how to do a yeast starter, um, basic biology of yeast, okay? So yeast are a living organism. They need oxygen to reproduce. Once that oxygen is gone, then they start metabolizing the sugars that are in there. So once the oxygen is gone, the yeast begin to metabolize, which means uh, they eat the sugars, they fart CO2, and they piss alcohol is essentially what happens, okay? So what we're trying to do on the stir plate is to never have it run out of oxygen. That's the goal. We want to top it with some sanitized aluminum foil or a, a, a foam cork stopper, just a foam stopper that goes in the flask. Um, but the key is to not let it ferment. So I hear a lot of people, oh, my starter's uh, overflowing. Uh, you need one of these giant flasks, uh, 5,000 uh, uh, milliliter flask compared to the 2,000 milliliter flask. You know, overall, not really required unless you're doing really big batches where you just don't like uh, it overflowing a lot on your stovetop, uh, which is a big benefit to having one of these if you're doing a stir uh, stovetop um, starter with a dry malt extract and water. So uh, lots more steps than that. Uh, we're going to keep it simple today. Okay, so basic equipment needed. Um, needed is your flask with stir bar. Notice that this is in a bucket of star sand right now. Uh, it's been sanitizing for the past few minutes. All right, sanitized set of scissors. And then whatever yeast you're using. So this is a 
uh, Y yeast 2278, which is a Czech Pilsner. We're going to be brewing up a lager tomorrow. Um, so with that, I like having my starters on for at least 24 to 36 hours. But if I can have it up to 48 hours, I'll do that. Uh, because the more oxygen that is introduced, the more your yeast cells will be, uh, uh, will be reproducing in there. Um, so this comes with 100 billion yeast cells, uh, which is fine for up to five gallons. But, you know, depending on the age of the yeast, uh, the older it is, uh, it is uh, you don't have as many viable yeast cells. So, you know, without a microscope um, where you can actually count the yeast cells, I like to just make sure I have enough, which is why I do starters for every batch. All right, so with that said, everything's sanitized. And let's go ahead and get down to it. The big thing here is just getting everything out. The bubbles are not going to hurt anything. So star sand is food safe, not a big deal. So my hands are clean, you know, sanitized hands are great, clean hands are even better, so make sure you wash them really good, uh, make sure it's sanitized, and just go ahead and drop it in there, all right? That goes on the stir plate. And you can see when you turn it on that the, um, the bar is going to be stirring there. So the whole point is to keep agitation on the liquid and it'll keep that oxygen flowing in. All right. Another thing we need is either boiled, sanitized water. I just always keep some distilled water laying around. All right, so you go ahead and pop this. I give it a quick spray just to make sure, even though this has been sitting in the sanitizer, I'm just ultra protective. Go ahead and give it a pour really quick. And all you're doing is pouring this into the flask. All right. So the instructions on this can just say 16 ounces of this wort to 16 ounces of distilled or sanitized water. So I just always give it a shake, rinse it out. Make sure we're nice and sanitized. I go ahead and fill her up. And once again, So now we have sanitized wort for our starter. Next step really is I'm going to oxygenate the wort after I add the yeast. Give this another spray. So this is the oxygen bottle. Screw it in. 
sanitized. Just goes in there. Now what we're gonna do is open it up. And just start adding oxygen. So what we're doing is we're adding pure oxygen in here. So it's a nice, healthy environment for the yeast cells. All right, that's good. Now, I'll go ahead Make sure everything's sanitized. And I cut her open. And all we're doing here is pouring it in. Oh, that smells good. And make sure we get everything, squeeze her out. So in these Y yeast bags, there is a little yeast nutrient packet, which is why I like them. And so you actually slap it um, about an hour or so prior to pitching it. Just make sure the yeast are nice and happy. That's it. All right, now, It's just going to sit nice and lightly over top and we just turn this on And that's it. So that is as easy as it gets. Some people, after letting it sit on for 12 to uh, 24 hours, uh, or 36 hours or 48 hours, will go ahead and take it and they'll put it in the refrigerator. Um, the reason why they do this is they want just to put their yeast uh, into the beer um, that they just made because uh, they feel that the um, this extra liquid in there is bad beer and uh, it will affect the taste and quality of their actual beer, which really isn't the case. Um, I guess it, it, it potentially could. Um, I have never uh, uh, done that to where I've had to um, decant off is what they call it. So you put it in the refrigerator, uh, the yeast um, uh, solidifies and forms a yeast cake on the bottom about anywhere from three quarters to an inch thick. Uh, and then um, what you end up doing is you take it and you just pour off most of the liquid that's sitting on top. You leave a little bit, you let it warm up um, on the table a couple hours before brewing, or you just, right when you start brewing, because it any, takes anywhere from four to six hours uh, to brew a batch of beer, you basically just take it, set it off to the side, swirl it up, and then just pitch the yeast in, uh, into your, your work just prior to uh, you throwing it um, in your uh, uh, fermenter uh, chamber, fermentation chamber, um, uh, or anything like that. So, what I recommend is just keep it on there as long as possible. When you're done, take it off and pitch it directly. That's the easiest thing to do. It's not going to affect the quality of your beer. Um, you'll be extremely happy with it, uh, and you will never have a stuck batch where uh, you're supposed to. Uh, ferment all the way down uh, to get the maximum, you know, alcohol percentage out of your beer and to minimize the sweetness. Um, you, you just want to make sure you have the proper yeast count. Um, so this is the best way to do it, uh, to get a good consistent brew every single time. 
And then one of the most important things so you don't lose your stir starter uh, or your stir bar is have a little magnet. Um, when you pull this off, you can put the magnet right up underneath. Uh, the stir bar is magnetic and it will stay there so you can just pour it right out and uh, you will never have uh, your stir bar follow your yeast into the fermenter batch to where you have to fish it out later. So anyway, I hope this helps and happy brewing.